welcome to another epic, in fact greater than epic, Mark and Dave's Lifting the Lid. I'm Mark. And I'm Dave. And today we are, in fact it's quite exciting today, I'm, I'm actually really quite stoked, which is not a word I use very often, but I am because with us today is one of my favourite loudspeakers. In fact, it's such a favourite of mine, I actually have ordered a pair of these for myself. And it is the Audio Physic Midex, Midex. I'd probably say Midex. And when we were in Munich a few weeks ago, there was a little bit of confusion with some people, whether it was Midex or Midex, but I am certain it is Midex. Would you say Midex? I think given that the model has been chosen to sit in the middle of the range, I would say it's the mid-X. Mm, I hadn't considered that, that was why they called it that. Mm. So why they call the codex the codex? I have no idea. Because it was secret code mm. for a great loudspeaker. <laughs> anyway, actually one thing, just as an aside, and, and I think this might become a regular thing on our videos, is the weather report. Now, Grant unfortunately can't remove the camera from the tripod because it's fixed. However, as they say, what a difference a day makes. We, yesterday we videoed the Mark Levinson unboxing video and it was absolutely torrential rain. And I guess it's maybe a sign from above that today we're doing the mid-X and it's beautiful sunshine. We've got very bright skylights here in the Elite Audio showroom and it's warm. Mm. Yeah, it's warm. It is. Anyway, back to the matter in hand. Just confused. The mid-X, as Dave has already pointed out, rather obviously sits in the middle between the Avanti and the Codex. Mm -hmm. And you're probably already familiar with both of those loudspeakers. The Avanti was in theory a 30th anniversary loudspeaker, which was really kind of a show, showpiece, showcase of the technology that audio physics could have been really patenting and working on for many many years, 30 of them in fact, and then subsequent to the Avanti we had the Codex and in fact one of the standout reviews of the Codex was done by Srajan at Six Moons. In fact, true story, Srajan loved the Codex so much he actually bought a pair for himself. And having met Srajan, Srajan in fact we chatted at the Munich show and he actually had a review mid-X uh, in his possession at the time. He was very impressed. And this is a guy who owns a pair of Codex and won a Six Moons Award. And um, the mid-X is the kind of next uh, alliteration of this range of loudspeakers. I've got a few things I love about the mid-X. Um, one which is the technology that's filtered down from the structure. Mm -hmm. What's your view on the structure? Uh, it's, it's a piece of engineering, it's phenomenal. And I think that, as I've said in the unboxing videos that I've completed for audio physics speakers, I think if there's any other speaker manufacturer out there, there's not many that can rival. There's a few, um, not to take away from what other manufacturers are doing, but Audio physics up there with the guys that really try and push the envelope with new and innovative technologies and things like the uh, the ceramic foam, um, the uh, what was it? No, no, um, I've forgotten the word. <coughs> what to use? Hyperholographic drivers. No, no, no. Yeah, it's oh, the ceramic the, foam brace. That's yeah, right. And the three D basket printing, yeah, which was first stuff. actually actually interestingly on the subject of the structure, the structure was the first speaker to have the 3D printing and I'm not aware of any other loudspeaker manufacturer using that technology yet. Now somebody no doubt is going to no. post below this and say mm -hmm. no no have you looked at and um, I'd love to know if there is and please tell us because we like to keep up to date with these things but as far as we're aware Audio Physic are unique in that regard and there really isn't anybody else using this technology because they can do something with 3D printing that you can't do in uh, normal manufacturing. Mm. So, um, and Rachel has very kindly turned the fan off. Yes, yeah, it's not hot enough. Yeah, we're yeah. just thinking it's about, you can see I'm actually Get perspiring fine. quite profusely. And uh, Rachel was wondering, I think it's like a torture. 
Is it because you didn't buy the donut today? No, Rachel bought the donuts. Oh, Rachel bought the donuts. Well, there you go. Yeah, so News I, indeed. Yeah, as you were saying, we, we could have paused there. Um, we do actually cut in some of these videos. It doesn't look this bad by uh, by, ch by chance or by luck. It's by design, <laughs> trust me. Um, but yeah, you're mentioning that the ceramic foam, uh, I couldn't remember the third word that they use, but it's a, the bracing. And that's one of the things that I, I look at with audio physic, the things that they've done in the ceramic foam and you can see it inside that, that cutaway. We'll be just shortly, we'll be cutting to a close up of the internals and Dave's going to talk you through the technical aspects of the speaker. Right. But, um, right. yeah. This is, your, but this is your, this is your, your, your baby. My baby is, you know what? I love these speakers. I've got to be honest with you. They're, I, I love all the products we sell and, you know, they are, each and every one uh, is justifiably in our product lineup. But for me, and as a massive Codex fan, my room is actually too small for Codex, really. So the Midex just ticks every box. Great bass, goes down really low, it's visceral fast. But what we get with, uh, and this is something, although there's a clue in the name, Hyper Holographic Driver, mm. and this is the third incarnation, this is the Hyper Holographic mid-range three driver that's in the mid -X. And those of you who have had the pleasure to listen to audio physics speakers previously, I remember the first time that I heard a pair of uh, audio physics speakers, it was a pair of Virgo 2s, yeah. and it was at a hi-fi dealer in Edinburgh, and I'd gone over specifically to hear these speakers. I'd read about them, I think there was a review in Hi-Fi Plus magazine. This is going back more than 20 years ago, so that gives you an idea how long ago that was. Mark was in his yeah, late Dave, wasn't, that Dave point. wasn't even born at that it's point. Like in the Milkman's uh, And I just, you know, I've listened to Kef's and uh, B&W's, Focals, and I remember just sitting there thinking, where have the speakers gone? They just literally disappeared. And later on, they in fact did disappear back home with me. That is how taken I was. And they're brilliant. Absolutely love them. And it's funny how things like that stick in your mind. You know, there's those little parts of your audio life that just kind of stick in there forever. They're never going to move. And I remember that like it was yesterday. And here we are today, some 20 odd years later, with a cutting edge piece of loudspeaker technology. And honestly, I would urge each and every one of you watching this video to compare the technology that Audiophysic use versus any other loudspeaker manufacturer. There's a lot of things they're doing, they're really cutting edge, they're not prepared, you know, they're not, sorry, they are very prepared to try something mm. radical and new, not just for the sake of it, but because it makes their speakers sound better than anything else in the market. And the build quality, I mean, what can you say about the build quality? It's great, it really is. I, and, you know, when we go to the cutaway, you'll see that, you know, sometimes someone can, might look at that speaker and think, oh, really, it's not a lot that goes into a speaker. Trust me when I say, that is a very well-built speaker. Yeah. You can open up other speakers, you could cut <laughs> another speaker in half, and you'd be shocked about what you would find. Be shocked. You would be absolutely shocked about even... Cotton the, wool, yeah. crossovers stuck with a bit of double-sided tape. In fact, I'm not going to mention the brand, yeah. but we recently had to remove the back panel from a loudspeaker that we'd mm. taken as a trade-in, and I kid you not, the crossover was stuck kind of at a slanted angle, like someone had yeah. punched it across the side of the head. And it was just stuck there with double-sided foam tape. Yeah, double-sided tape. In fact, if your kids ever run out of hamster bedding, you can always take a bit from the inside <laughs> of some of these lights. Although speakers. this is proper audiophile hamster bedding. Hamster bedding, so it's, it's yeah. about £2,000 a half ounce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite as expensive as ink for your inkjet printer. No, <laughs> no that, that's uh, what's true. Apparently cheap. that is uh, the, the most valuable commodity in the world, yeah. allegedly. Exactly. Anyway, um, let's just take a break for a second then and we'll get a close-up of, really, so you can see exactly what we're talking about and then we'll, we'll chat, we'll, we'll get back to the couch and we'll, we'll talk some more. And yeah. Grant's looking up to see where that aeroplane is, which you'll have a hard job seeing through there because it's completely opaque. Great. Great, okay. Let, and to the speaker. To the speaker we'll go. Hurrah! <laughs> so in front of us here, I've actually got my trusty remote control here to do the point, and this has a, a very unique function that you might get to see at the end of the video. And uh, as Mark pans in here, 
It's a, a three-way design. I, this particular speaker from Audiophysic, the Medex, and you've got your bass units, top and bottom, mid-range, and then your tweeter unit. Now the tweeter is a hyper holographic tweeter. You've got the hyper holographic uh, mid-range unit as well. Now that um, particular uh, driver uh, also has slightly something that's slightly different in that it's a ceramic coated aluminium cone and that is again unique it's technology that's filtering through now on some of the the audio physic range. What that means is it's very rigid and stops uh, unwanted resonances and things like that. Inside here you'll see various electronic components forming parts of different crossover. So the quality of all these components is extremely high. There's not a component used in any of these banks of electronics, let's keep it as simple as that, that isn't of the highest quality. You're not going to find cheap, nasty components there at all. You are finding things at the opposite end, things you wouldn't expect to find in there for, for the money. We mentioned in the video about Audio Quest uh, cables, I'm sure we did. If we didn't, this cable here it's all AudioQuest, it's branded up by AudioQuest and it's what's used in the, the construction. You can see this uh, honeycomb uh, shaped material, this acoustic foam, which is extremely stiff. It helps with the, the cabinet, um, but it also allows a passageway for the sound waves. And you can see sound waves pass through here, come down, and they come all the way down in the cabinet. Now, the cabinet uh, itself, it's the sandwich design. So you've got this substrate here with the bonded glass panels that you can see at the top. That makes for a very, very stiff cabinet. Stops unwanted resonances as well. I've mentioned previously about the vibration, vibration control terminals. And inside here, you'll see the, the inside of those. So the terminals here, they are mounted in such a way that the the WBT binding posts are insulated and isolated in some way from the, the vibrations that are caused by the, the sound waves. You can see the WBT posts there. A couple other things to mention. Uh, the driver's dual basket design. So part of the hyperholographic 3 technology. So instead of having a single basket behind the, the driver, there's actually two. So that, again, stops unwanted vibrations uh, at, at the driver source. Again, the quality of these, they're made under license for audio physics. Nobody else uses these drivers. But again, the quality of the drivers, the magnets used, the quality of the actual diaphragm material uh, for the cones, it's extremely high. That's the uh, the cutaway and a bit of information there. All this is available on Audio Physics website. Again, with more detailed and in-depth uh, explanations. If there's anything else you would want to know about that that we haven't answered in the video, drop us an email, and if we can't answer, we'll get in touch with uh, Wolfgang at Audio Physics because he'll be more than happy, I'm sure, to offer a really in-depth and detailed explanation. Uh, as to why they've used certain things within the, the construction of these speakers. Thanks. So, you can start to understand why the audio physics speakers, and particularly the mid X. So, you can, is this, are you texting someone? It's just a th thumbs of fury here. Who's he messaging? I don't know. <laughs> it's so rude. Somebody trying to sell us that you can start to understand why when you see really what's inside an audio physics loudspeaker and Dave, just before we, we cut to the internals, highlighted a very valid point that a lot and probably more than we'd care to admit, loudspeaker manufacturers would probably not want you to see what's inside the loudspeakers because you would be genuinely shocked. The thing I love about audio physics and every time I go to the Munich show they always have at least one pair of speakers with 
the internals completely visible. And that actually shows you how confident and proud they are of what they make. And there's a lot goes into a loudspeaker. I mean, I've been to hi-fi shows where we've been exhibiting and you've experienced the same. If someone comes up and says, oh, I'm building my own loudspeaker, I'm using this cabinet, this driver, these components in the crossover. And then you might bump into them a year later and say, oh, by the way, how did you, like, oh, disaster, it sounded terrible, yeah. the bass was too strong or the mid-range was non-existent. And it shows you that, you know, these speakers take thousands of hours of trial and error, testing, R&D, it's intense, it's labour intensive yeah. to even get these to sound the way they do. So when, we, when we're fortunate enough to see the finished article, which is what we have here in front of us, it is something to be hugely proud of if you were behind the creation of, of these speakers. Absolutely. Um, one other thing very sort of briefly to say, um, I don't know whether that's that sound effect, Money Grant sound effect, it sounded like the, it. The Foley artist will, will sort that out there. Yeah, for yeah. Grant will edit that bit out quite easily. He's nodding his head, no, he's shaking his head. He likes to leave that stuff in. Yeah. Can't help himself. Um, we're going to offer a 30 day money back guarantee on Medex, and simply because, with loudspeakers in particular, to really appreciate how good they are, you have to get them in your own home, and they do take a, a you know a decent time to burn in. Now, burn in, and I know we're kind of off on a tangent here from speakers, but burn in is a real phenomena. It is something which some people think it's snake oil. It's absolutely not. It's the law of physics, and it's to do with the flow of electrons and so on. You've got moving drivers inside a, a speaker cabinet that require to be burnt in, you've got crossover components, electrical cable and so on. Interestingly, another loudspeaker manufacturer I've noticed on their owner's handbook have recently put burn in expected times and it was 99%, 400 hours and 100 hours gets you 65% of your speaker performance, Yeah, which is quite interesting. I mean, we know ourselves here in the Elite Audio showroom that when we bring in a new anything there's really no point in listening to it till about a week after it's arrived because yeah. once you get a flavour of something that's going to sound good, the, the burn-in's quite important. So when, when you've got your uh, speakers at home, how long do you take them to burn-in, would you say? Well, it's, I've got Bonnikies at home and the wide band is really stiff and mm. I think one of the things that I try to implore to the customers is, well, look, even if you cannot believe in any shape or form about burn-in on electrical components, there is a mechanical element to a speaker, do you agree? Yeah, and everyone will agree there is. And that's the same as a cartridge. Yeah. And that mechanical energy that is there is caused by an electrical uh, voltage and current being applied to the driver. So therefore, it stands to reason that the, the more malleable and the more free play that that driver has through use, it will take less to actually make it move in terms of voltage and current what the current demands will be on, on the arm. So that that must make a difference. Yeah. It surely must. And it does. I mean, it's not, this is not something that's hypothetical or something that's been made up. I think there are many people, and I've seen forum posts, they think it's, a, it's almost, burning has been invented by the audio industry. It absolutely has not. It, it's a real thing. And it's the one thing he hasn't invented, <laughs> let me tell you. And it's also <laughs> interesting that reviewers, before we even send products for review, say, is it yeah. burnt in? Yeah. Now, why would they even ask the question if it wasn't real? So it's a, it's a real thing. So coming back to what I was saying originally, the, the reason for the 30-day money-back guarantee is to give you time to burn in the speaker and make sure it's right for you. Now, the one thing that we know, and one of the, the real, I would say, standout features of the Midex, in fact, all of the audio physics in this part of the audio physics range, including the new classic series as well, is that room placement becomes very easy. Mm -hmm. Now you don't have rear ported uh, base nor front ported. As you, you remember or recall from the cutaway section that we did uh, a few minutes ago, that the base is very nicely controlled and it actually, that it, using the ceramic foam, it creates a buffer so that the base can actually be faster and more visceral than you would with say a conventional ported loudspeaker. So you will learn very quickly that when you get these speakers in your own home, 
that it's not a case of will they work or won't they, it's just a case of finding the sweet spot. And once you've found that sweet spot, trust me, it is amazing, absolutely amazing. In terms of what you would use with these, they're relatively easy to drive, so if you, if you own a valve amplifier, you shouldn't really have any difficulty in driving them. They're about 90 dB efficient from memory, and the load is, is, is very uh, even across the frequency range. So again, you're not going to find that you've got a speaker that's dropping to you know, under 2 ohms and potentially risking damaging your, your lovely amplifier. They just sound amazing. The hyper-holographic driver, which is the thing I was alluding to, the story about the, the pair of Virgo 2s that I bought, every single pair of Audiophysics speakers, and you can tell I'm a massive fan of these, of the whole Audiophysics range, is that they are the most holographic speaker you will ever hear. They are just incredible. You just lose yourself in, in the sound stage. But you've got to find that out for yourself. Hence, we're going to give you the opportunity to try them in your own home. And in fact, um, Dave will even deliver them. Will I? Oh, Dave? Oh. Will I? It's fine. Did you doze off there? No, I'm just, it's hard sometimes, you know, you sit here and you listen <laughs> no, and it's, it's, a, it's a comfortable couch. I don't know, it, it's, it's not the couch, trust me, it's not the couch. We did promise actually we were going to do a, a, a sledge or a toboggan down a snowy mountain. No, we didn't. Our, we did. Dave, we did. It would be, it was in a, Grant's already saying it was in a previous lifting the lid that we said, and obviously it's quite difficult to make You pay it's Grant's right. wages, Grant will always nod his head when you say something. He's shaking his head now. No, he's <laughs> We did say we were going to do uh, mm -hmm. a couch down there. We could actually go to Edinburgh Ski Slope. Mm. We are actually, we are going, we're, we're going to be doing a, a, a little road trip. Um, we've got a new van arriving and we're going to do a road trip with some uh, electronics that you might enjoy. Uh, Grant had come up, has come up with a really good idea that we're going to tour some equipment around some of the key and most beautiful parts of our lovely countryside. So maybe we could, how about if we towed this behind the van? We could sit there and Grant could film out of the back of the van with the van. It's like they're doing Top Gear, you see them, they're only the guys hanging out the, the sunroofs of Range Rovers, videoing stuff. You've got to watch that, you know, it doesn't go wrong and that the people stay on the sofa because otherwise it's going to end up look like ISIS has just turned up in Glencoe oh, driving be people fine. behind vans. It'll be fine. There's no, I can't see any health and safety I should yeah, that. No, me neither. It'll be fine. So back to why we're actually here, the Audiophysic Mid-X. It's an amazing loudspeaker. It sits in the middle between the Avanti and the Codex, as I've already said. We'd love you to hear them. We have them on display and available for home trial. All you have to do is get in touch. Grant will no doubt put our usual contact details below this video. If you haven't, in fact, I'll put it over to Dave. Why should people sign up for our newsletter, Dave? Why should people sign up for our, for newsletter? our newsletter? Yeah. Exclusive offers. Yeah, that's a good one. It's very well produced. The artwork's amazing. It actually is. You know, yeah. Grant does a. Grant, I'll give you a compliment here. The way you produce that newsletter is really. It's, yeah. Excellent. It's really good standard. In fact, we get a lot of feedback, yeah. uh, seeing how much people enjoy it. I think it's just a good way of keeping in touch. To be yeah. honest, it's not. People often have a, a resistance, and as, when I say people, I don't mean our customers. I mean people in general will have resistance to giving out detail. And ultimately, say, oh, it's for marketing. Look, it is for marketing. Of course, it is. Uh, but what we try to do is give you a good flavour of what's going on here at Elite Audio. It's written in a fun way, it gives you exclusive offers, and that's it. That's that's as difficult as it actually is. Nobody will use that data for anything other than send you the newsletter. And it's all GDPR compliant, and Grant will keep you right with that. And if you want to unsubscribe at any point because you don't like the content, that's fine too. So. Although you have to click 20 times to unsubscribe. Yeah. Actually, you kind of piqued my interest when you say people have a resistance. I had this vision of you with a multimeter <laughs> checking no, what, no, what no. someone's resistance was. No. No, I thought it's not. It's a totally different kind of resistance. Yeah. See, so my brain's just totally now electronic. I'm just thinking yeah. everything electronic, measuring yeah. people's resistance. I'm just worried now that you've, you've finally answered the question about why we're actually all here. It is, it's to listen to music. Yeah, it's just and that's, that's that's it. It's simple. Think, Very simple. Yeah. So yes, please sign up for our newsletter. If you haven't al already done so, have a look at our social media, our Facebook page. We have a lot of interaction on our Facebook page, so like our page please, that would be great. 
and look out for the next lifting the lid, which will be probably in the next two weeks, Grant. It's not a Yeah. We have a lot of new things to show you. We're really excited about it. So keep an eye open for the announcements. We have a showroom day in uh, September, which Grant will be announcing on social media. So uh, you'll have to reserve a ticket. What date in that? Uh, it's the first Saturday in September. What, what, what date is that? It's the 7th. The Grant is actually very handily putting his hands up and seven. still mark. It's, it's the 7th finger of the seventh September. Day. Seven, hang on, hang on. 7th day, yeah. week, what does he mean? month. Does he mean it's July? I don't know. <laughs> I just can't on the number 7. Quite. Anyway, because we're no doubt going to run out of uh, video recording time yeah, here. Yeah. Grant's looking a bit panicky now. Thank you for watching. Once again, we hope you've enjoyed it. We do enjoy doing them for you. Please keep the feedback coming, keep the ideas coming. We love to hear from you and we'll look forward to seeing you the next time round. So it's goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. See you very soon indeed. Thanks again for watching. Bye. I love that idea of towing the couch behind the van. Seriously, I love that one. That would be brilliant. I know it's a bit risky. I know mm. there's an element. If we did it slowly though, see if we did it slowly, Grant, and then you speeded the video up, it might look like it was done fast. Why does he not speak? Oh, he spoke. The man behind the camera has a voice. So you're buying the mid-ex because they suit the size of your room better. How are you going to fit them into the room under the stairs? It's, it looks it's like TARDIS. It's, it looks it's bigger like, than it actually is. It's like you, you and Harry Potter are the only people that could own mid -ex. Yeah, do you know what? Harry Potter would love a pair of mid -ex. Yeah. Because, do you know why? Because they're magical. They're magical. Oh, me. Honestly. Speakeramus disappearus, as they say in the audio physic world. There I go, let's see. See? I think I've invented a new catchphrase. Speakeramus disappearus. New magic remote turns Mark off. <laughs>